transparency. That's the topic of today's video. Now, I would like to draw your attention that if you landed here because of the YouTube algorithm, first of all, hi. I'm the Gujasi Gohil and this is the second episode of my How to Write Shaders series. So if you have never written shaders in Unity before, you can go watch the first episode and then come back. Alright, let's deal with transparency. Alright, last time we were here and in the fragment shader, I'm just sampling the texture and tinting it with my base color property. Now if I change the alpha values of that base color property, nothing's happening. That's because I haven't tell my GPU what to do with transparency. To do that, I need to set the blend mode. Now in Unity, there are a couple of blending modes, but for this example, we will focus on alpha blending mode. Now I'm sure you know what alpha blending mode is, but I'm going to explain it anyway for the beginner who is going to land on this video after 10 years. Hopefully. <laughs> so in alpha blending mode, let's say I've set the alpha value to 0.1. That means that my geometry is only 10% opaque and 90% transparent. So I'm going to take 10% color value of my geometry and 90% color value from my background and mix those two together. And I'll get the final result that looks like transparency. To set the blending mode, I'll come up to my HLSL program block. And here I can set some GPU commands. Blending mode is one of them, so I'll go blend. Then I need to set the source alpha, which will be source alpha and the destination value. So one minus source alpha. And as soon as I hit save, now my cube is transparent. And that's the video. Just kidding. I have an issue here. If I look at the cube from this angle, now the cube that is behind my cube is not being rendered. Why? The reason is Unity is trying to prevent an overdraw. Now what is an overdraw you might ask? In the most simple term, overdraw happens when the same pixel gets colored more than once within a single frame. And overdraw is a bad thing for performance. To prevent the overdraw, Unity uses multiple techniques. One of them is called depth testing. Now if you want to learn more about depth testing or depth in general, there will be a link on top of your video or I will put that down in the description box. But for now, just an overview. Let's say we have one fragment here and another on top of that. So to prevent the overdraw, Unity will discard the fragment that is further away from the camera and color only this pixel. That is exactly what is going on here. Unity have just discarded the fragment of the cube that is further away to prevent the overdraw. So to fix this, I need to disable the depth testing. I can do that by the command zwrite. So here I will just set the zwrite to off. By default, it will be on and I'm going to set it to off. And as soon as I hit save, yep, our cube that is further away is getting drawn, but we have another issue here. It seems like the top part of my transparent cube is not getting rendered, but in reality, those fragments are overridden by my skybox. Why is that? Once again, the answer is to prevent the overdraw. You see, to prevent the overdraw, Unity uses another technique called render queues. You see, our entire scene will render in different parts. First, only opaque objects will be rendered. After that, our skybox will render. And then if we have any objects with alpha cutoff values, those objects will be rendered. And at last, our transparent objects will render. So right now, my transparent cube is getting rendered within the same geometry or opaque render cube. So I need to change that. There are two ways I can change that. The very first thing is go to inspector and in the render queue, just select the value from this drop down. Right now, it's been set to from shader. And I haven't set any values in the shader. So by default, it will be in the geometry or opaque objects render queue. Now I'm not going to change it from the inspector. I will change it from the code so you can see how you can set the render queue from the shader code. So in the sub shader, just we have to write another tag, which will be queue. And then I, I need to set the values. The possible values are this plus sky. So I need to set the queue to transparent. So I will go transparent. 
and if I hit save, yep, now the issue has been resolved. Now I can also set the offset here if I go plus one or minus one. So let's say I want to render my cube after the alpha cutoff objects, but before the transparent objects will render, I can do that by transparent minus one. Okay, that's cool, but I just going to set it to transparent. And now that I'm rendering a transparent object, I should change this render type tags value so that it makes sense. Again, this is only a debug only tag, so it will not affect actual output, but I'm going to set it to transparent. Now, if you're finding this video easier to understand, please consider hitting that like button so that YouTube algorithm will know that, okay, this video is helpful and will be shown to more people. I need help here. <laughs> okay, now let's say I want to render an alpha cutoff geometry. And if you don't know what alpha cutoff is, I will simply set some cutoff value and only the part of my geometry or fragments whose alpha values are greater than this cutoff value will be rendered. Others will simply be discarded. Okay, for that, I will first create another property. So here I will go underscore cutoff. Then I will give the label alpha cutoff. And this will be float. But I need it as a slider that goes between 0 and 1. So I will simply go range, then 0 and 1. And then I will set the default value to, let's say, 0 0.5. And I will have a nice slider of alpha cutoff that goes between 0 and 1. All right, pretty cool. Now, let me just change the texture to this. And set the tint color white for now. All right, now I need to define this property in my HLSL code. So I will come to my C buffer block and go float and make sure I have the exact same name. So cut off. Then in the fragment shader, I need to determine what is the alpha value of my geometry. And that is basically base color dot alpha into texture.alpha so I will just put the entire thing in the clip function and then subtract it with the cutoff and the entire thing is gone and what clip function does is it will simply discard the current fragment if the input value is less than zero and now if I tweak the alpha cutoff yep it is working Now, if you look closely, you can see that only the front faces of my cube is being rendered. So if I want to change that, I can do that using the curl GPU command. Let's try that. So I'll come up here. Now by default, the curl mode will set to back. So don't render any back faces. So if I want to render only back faces, I will go curl and front. So now I have only back faces. Now let's say I want to render both faces, so I'll just simply set the curl mode to off. And now both faces of my cube are getting rendered. Okay, I will end here. In the next episode, we will tackle lit shaders. That's it from me, and I'll see you in the next one.